Okay, so welcome to this next video in functional analysis. Uh, we are, in this video, we're going to uh, see that the limit of a sequence in an abstract metric space is unique, i.e. Uh, a sequence cannot converge on multiple different limits. Okay, uh, so, uh, right, so, um, okay, so if we have a sequence, so for, well, actually first we have to start with our metric space. If we have a metric space here, which is a uh, set big X, and a metric D defined on there. And we have a sequence, so we have some little x, which is uh, a sequence x1, x2, x3, etc. Okay, and this sequence is going to be convergent in our metric space. Uh, so we've got, this is the picture, we've got x1, x2, x3, and then it converges up to something, okay? And let's say it converges up to uh, some limit L1. What we want to prove is that it cannot also converge up to some limit L2, where uh, L2 is a distinct point. So it cannot have multiple limits. At the maximum, a sequence can have one limit. Uh, it can't have two limits. So uh, let's suppose, uh, so the way we're going to prove this is proof by contradictions. We're going to prove, uh, suppose it's possible that it can converge uh, to two things, and then uh, we're going to prove that we get an utter ridiculousness, some utter ridiculous statement. Okay, uh, so proof by contradiction. So suppose the limit uh, as n approaches infinity of xn is indeed equal to L1, and uh, the limit as n approaches infinity of uh, xn uh, is equal to L2. So in our arbitrary metric space, so it has two limit. Uh, so it has two um, limits. And the sequence has two limits, and L1 is not equal to L2 in the metric space, i.e. they are distinct elements of the set big X. Okay, uh, so the way we're going to prove this is quite simple. Uh, so uh, if you look at the, if we draw another picture of the metric space, we have this, this is our metric space, so this is our set uh, big X, and we have the two points L1 and L2. Now because they are distinct, and because X is a metric space, we know that the distance between L1 and L2 is not equal to zero. That's the uh, second axiom of metric spaces, so that's um, uh, positive definiteness. Um, that's what wasn't true in a pseudo-metric space. But this is a metric space. We are, by hypothesis, this is a metric space. So, uh, the distance between L1 and L2 is some non-zero uh, non number. Non -zero, um, it's some strictly positive number, so L1, L2. And we'll just call this distance, what should we call it? We'll call it uh, kappa, we'll call it capital D, okay? So this distance is some number. You can work it out. If I give you what L1 and L2 are supposed to be, uh, you in principle could go away and work out exactly what number this is. Um, just by applying the uh, metric, which is defined. So we know what this number is. So basically what my statement now is, is um, let epsilon equal D over 2 and draw uh, open bores of size epsilon around each of the L1 and L2. So basically, um, draw open bores of size uh, D over 2 uh, between L1 and L2. So we have it like this, basically. And they just, the two balls just sort of touch each other in the middle like that. So this is the open ball sent to the L2 of radius D over 2. And this one here is the open ball sent to the L1 of radius d over 2. Okay, so we have these two open balls uh, centered around these two points. And the first thing to prove is that if you've got a point in this open ball, it is not in the other open ball. So, we want to prove that these two open balls are completely disjoint, i.e. their intersection is the empty set. So, we want to show that the ball, the open ball around L1, uh, center the, uh, sorry, center the L1 of radius d t over 2, intersect the open ball center the L2 um, of radius d over 2 is equal to the empty set, i.e. if s is an element of L1, it cannot be an element of L2. So let's prove that. So let's suppose some we've got some little element s, which is an element of the open ball around, centered around L1 of radius d over 2. Okay? Uh, and uh, basically, let's prove it cannot be an element of this ball too. So let's do it by a proof by contradiction. So let's uh, suppose exactly what we want to prove is impossible. So we want to suppose that S is also an element of L2 the, uh, we, uh, 
of the ball, open ball at the centre of the L2 of radius d over 2. Now just apply the triangle inequality because uh, the distance between, uh, let's say, L1 and L2 is equal to d. We know this is equal to d, but apply the triangle inequality. Uh, we have this point S, basically, and I can't really draw it on the picture because the picture, I've drawn the two balls uh, to be non-intersecting. Uh, non so imagine that we have uh, some point, well, um, it's going to look ridiculous, basically, if I try and draw it, but let's imagine this point S is in both of them. I can't draw it because, as I say, I've drawn them as though they're not intersecting, but basically the idea is that, in fact, I'll draw it over down here. We've got L1 and L2. And basically, we've got some point S here, and we're now going to apply the triangle inequality and say that the distance between L1 and L2, this distance here, is less than or equal to the distance between L1 and uh, S plus the distance between S and L2. So that distance between L1 and S is this distance here, here, and the distance between S and L2 is this distance here, so it's, that's why it's the triangle inequality, because we're just uh, using the sides of triangles like that. Okay, uh, but if S is in L, is in the open, if S is in, if S is in both of these balls, then this thing, this statement here, implies that the distance between L1 and S is strictly less than D over 2, and this statement here implies that the distance between L2 and uh, S is strictly less than D over 2, because that's just the definition of these open balls. They are all points which are a distance from the centre less than the radius. Uh, so these distances must be strictly less than D over 2 if it's in both open balls. But that's ridiculous, because if we add those two together now, that implies that this sum is less than D, but we know it's equal to D, so it implies that the distance between L1 and L2 will be strictly less than D by transitivity, because this is strictly less than this, this is less than or equal to this, so this has to be strictly less than this. Uh, so that's a contradiction, basically. So uh, these two balls must be totally um, disjoint. Okay, but th that is all we need, basically, because uh, if we look at these two definitions now, these definitions of the limit, uh, so if we look at the definition of the sequence converging to L1, what that effectively means is that um, there must exist, if we remember the definition is that for all epsilon, for all open balls you draw around this point L1, there must exist a point in the sequence, some x big N, such, such that for that point and for all points in the all terms in the sequence after that term, they must be within this open ball. So now just apply that um, that um, statement for this specific open ball of radius d over two. So I'm basically letting the epsilon in the definition of convergence be equal to d over two, and I'm saying there must exist now. Uh, a big N, which is a function of D over 2, so a big N, which is specific to that D over 2, which is an element of the natural numbers such that if little n is greater than or equal to big N, it implies that, let's say, uh, let's write it a different way, that x little n is an element of the open ball uh, sent to the L1 of radius uh, D over 2. Okay, so what I've said, instead of saying that the distance must be less than, uh, the distance between L1 and Xm, little xm must be less than d over 2, the equivalent statement is to say that xm must be an element of this open ball, because being an element of this open ball implies that your distance is less than d over 2, so it's an utterly equivalent condition. But that's somehow help, more helpful, because what we're saying now is that there must be a point in the sequence, some x big N, so if I, um, if I get some more paper and draw another picture. Okay, so uh, this is what we've got so far. We have our we have our metric space here. We have some limit what L1 and some limit L2. We've got some distance between them, which is this big D. And then we said draw open balls around them like this, such that the open balls are completely disjoint. And we've proven that that that, that no point can be in both of them. And now what I've said is that because the sequence converges to L1, there must be some point in the sequence, let's say x big N, after which all of the points of this sequence are within this open ball around uh, L1 of radius d over 2. So because the sequence converges to L1, 
all of the there must exist some big N such that all the points are within this ball. But because we've by assumption we said that the sequence also converged to L2, that tells us that if we let epsilon equal d over 2 in the uh, convergence of a sequence criterion, that there must exist some uh, big N which is an element of the natural numbers such that uh, if little n is greater than or equal to big N, uh, the uh, point little xn is an element of the open ball around L2 of radius d over 2. So basically I'm saying that because it's converging to L2, there must be a point in the sequence, another point in the sequence, should we call this big N prime so that it's not confused with this big N, and there must be another point in the sequence xn big prime such that, they all, such that for that point and for all terms after that term, uh, all of the terms must be in here, but that's a blatant contradiction because we're saying that there must be some point in the sequence after, let's say, um, let me draw the sequence out, x1, x2, x3 here, and then somewhere it goes up to x big N, and then somewhere, let's say, it go beyond there, it goes to x n big prime, uh, of the n prime, sorry, big n prime, but of course these could have been the other way around, but that's, you know, it doesn't matter. Basically what I'm saying is that for all points of the sequence beyond this here, it should be in there, and for all points of the sequence beyond this one, so like this, it should be in there. But that's a contradiction because all of these points over here have to be in both this ball and this ball. The tail ends of the sequence have to be in both, contained in both of these balls, and these are disjoint balls, so they cannot be in both of them. So that's a contradiction. So basically, uh, that proves that a sequence can ha converge to only one limit. Uh, so it's blatant rubbish to say that a sequence has more than one limit in a metric space. Okay, that'll do for this video.